This is how atrocities start because there's people obsessed with control at the top and inside that equation is an uncontrollable life force. And this group at the top says, well, anybody that can't be controlled, we're just going to remove and euthanize. I am a husband, a father, a lawyer, a Christian, and a proud Canadian. I started this series because it was clear that our nation needs truth. Not just another biased narrative, but real information of substance. We need access to facts and the freedom to think for ourselves. I'm Leighton Gray, and this is Gray Matter. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Gray Matter. Well, have you ever been brainwashed? You probably don't think that you have, but the truth is you probably have. This is a realization that I just came to recently. Until I met today's guest and saw the presentation that you're going to see today, I thought of brainwashing in terms of, you know, The Manchurian Candidate, a really cool 1962 movie starring Frank Sinatra, uh, which is a great movie, by the way. I encourage you to check it out. But brainwashing is something that is happening every day in real time. It's happening to you and me. It's happening everywhere. And our guest today is Jason Kristoff. He is going to explain to us how this is done and why it's being done and also some solutions to to help us avoid bring, being brainwashed. Thanks for being with us today, Jason. It's great to have you on the program. Well, thanks, Lane. I appreciate that. So uh, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about Jason. I'm going to introduce him properly. But before we do that, as we always do, we're going to go to some of our... Uh, our framing aphorisms. The first one is uh, is from uh, the late uh, Malcolm X, who said that the media is the most powerful entity on earth. They have the power to make the innocent guilty and to make the guilty innocent. And that's power because they control the minds of the masses. The next one is from Mark Twain, who said, uh, when even the brightest mind in our world has been trained up from childhood in a superstition of any kind, it will never be possible for that mind in its maturity to examine sincerely, dispassionately, and conscientiously any evidence or any circumstance which shall seem to cast a doubt upon the validity of that superstition. I doubt if I could do it myself. And finally, from our guest today, who said, the idea that our society is best served when all family members separate in the morning to do things they generally don't enjoy could be the biggest fallacy ever imprinted on humanity. So who do we have on the show? We have Jason Kristoff. Jason runs an international self-sabotage coaching school where students are educated on the subjects of mind control, brainwashing, behavior modification, and psychological manipulation, all of which we're going to learn about today. Jason's students then use their knowledge in these areas to help re- program their clients into better versions of themselves on all levels. Jason believes that the social decay we openly see in our world today has only come about because key players in our society are using this manipulative psychology against most of humanity. If we are to survive and thrive in the upcoming years, Jason believes that each citizen must understand these processes as the, so as to protect themselves from future psychological operations. So, uh, and, you know, Jason uh, is joining us tonight from uh, Europe. Thanks for, it's, it's night for him. Uh, thanks for being here, Jason, uh, under these conditions. Um, he's going to show us a video and then give us an explanation about it. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about, maybe just to set it up, Jason, if we could start with talking about your podcast uh, and what the psychology of freedom is all about. Well, the psychology of freedom is like, it's equal to what I do on a daily basis. I just simply try to educate the public how they can be psychologically manipulated in order that in the future, they may be able to sidestep those psychological manipulations. So I do articles, podcasts, I've done over 250 interviews. I've spoken at the European Parliament about mind control and media coercion. I'm speaking at the Romanian Parliament in two weeks. That's why I'm in Europe on the same subject. So what I just try and do is educate the public because we're in a very dangerous uh, spot right now in our society where this these very tried and true uh, manipulation tactics are being 
forwarded on the public. The public don't know how they work. They don't know how powerful they are. They don't know how to bypass them. And the media is really having their way with the public. And if you don't understand mind control, the media can literally make you do absolutely anything. The video will be a good testament of that. I mean, it's a, it's a bit of a entertainment based hypnosis and mind control, but it's the exact same techniques that are used on the public today. Well, I have to count myself among the people you just described who are ignorant or indolent about uh, what is happening in terms of mind control and, and brainwashing. I really thought until I saw the presentation that you're going to give us in a few minutes, uh, that this was something that happened to other people. And it really shook me. And it, I, this is part of the reason why I really want to have you on the program. I'm so grateful that you're here. I'm reminded of what it says in Proverbs, you know, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Uh, that's from Proverbs 20, chapter 23, verse 7. And so with that, uh, that bit of a setup, Jason, do you want to take us into this video and maybe set it up and tell us, you know, without giving it away, what we're going to be seeing? And then perhaps we could watch the video and afterwards you can tell us kind of what it means. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shock you a little bit. I'm going to change the videos. I know you've watched the one already. I'm going to give you an even uh, more in-depth experience here. I'm going to change the video. It's going to be the same amount of time. You can sub it in and basically it sort of adds more shock and awe value for your for your listeners and your viewers and what we're going to be I hope I survive this. It's basically <laughs> yes, you're going to be very entertained. I know you've seen the the one uh, that we were going to use already. This one right. will be Howie Mandel and this is this is good because oh, yes. it involves some famous people. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Howie Mandel from America's Got Talent. Now he comes up against a mentalist by the name of Max Major. Now, Max Major is aware of how the subconscious mind can be hacked. People like Howie Mandel generally believe their wealth reflects their intelligence and their inability to be hacked. This makes someone like Howie uh, Mandel the, the perfect mind control victim. And Interesting. What, what you're going to see, the reason I'm going to sort of change the example in mid-flight here is this will show you the power of visual mind control manipulation and also auditory. So it's oh. very, it's sort of a, sort of the most powerful video I have. Again, it's only seven minutes. So what I'll do is I'll share my screen and there's two tricks in this show. And, uh, it, you know, it's, it's a clip from America's Got Talent. One trick that's done, Max Major does explain to the audience, showing them how easy they can be hacked. That's what I love about this. The second sort of trick, he does not explain. I'll explain it to you when we're finished. How does that Fantastic. sound? Fantastic. Oh, yeah, he's totally in Howie's mind. I mean, absolutely. See, that was... Okay, Jason, sure that you... is literally mind-blowing. And you're right, extremely entertaining, but also very, very frightening. Uh, how right. is this done? How does this happen? Break this down for us so that we can understand how vulnerable we are to this type of messaging. Well, you can see the, the audience members also drew the same picture. Yeah. There is a mechanism in your body that you don't know about that explained in the last talk that I was giving. It is called the subconscious mind pathway, and it's there. It loves you, it wants to protect you, and it wants you, it knows that if you sort of mimic what the bigger group is doing, it would be safer because being right. in the minority, you're in a weaker position. So mm -hmm. it goes along 24 hours a day, sort of collecting your environmental stimuli, looking for repetitive content. The repetitive content, it believes, denotes what the bigger herd is saying, thinking, or doing. This is all automatic, outside your conscious awareness. Once it has nailed down the repetitive content, it will feed it into your behavioral system and make you act it out in the same way it will heal a cut without your participation. 
It will control the female's menstrual flow without your, her participation, your hair is growing without your participation. And all these things that we're talking about, these are metabolic functions that are there to keep you safe. I mean, a cut healing without you getting involved, your heart beating. I mean, there's things that go on in your body to make you safe that are outside your conscious awareness. You don't have any control of the people who rule us know that oddly enough they do, it's like a cell phone they know like i don't know how a cell phone works but i still use it i don't need to know how it works to, to use my <laughs> cell phone the people ruling us have found this out through trial and error over thousands of years is that there has to be a recording mechanism going on unconsciously at a very ferocious speed they've tried to basically you know track or clock the speed that this protective and loving part of the brain downloads your environmental stimuli. And they said it can download, some estimates say it's 400 billion bits of info per billion? second. Billion. 400 billion per second. And it travels at a speed of 100,000 miles an hour in the nervous system. And your conscious mind, which everybody thinks are really smart, like I'm explaining the video with my conscious mind it can only handle, you know, a couple thousand bits of info or a second, and it travels much slower. So Max Major, you can see he wasn't nervous <laughs> because he knows <laughs> this is a guarantee is that this part of the brain is always comes to standard equipment on the human body. He's going to be able to hack Howie Mandel. He's going to be able to hack the studio audience. And all he has to do is riddle repetitive content throughout the you know the video montage and this part of the brain sort of like a server at a restaurant is very busy saying oh this is repetitive this must represent what the bigger group is saying thinking or doing it's safer in the bigger group it basically for lack of a better phrase of trying to describe it this part of the brain would say oh it looks like we've crossed into a new tribe. It looks like we're in a sun tribe. And if you want to bond with the sun tribe and be safe with the sun tribe and, you know, walk in that new tribe without getting attacked, you want to flash the gang signs of the sun tribe, which is the sun. Mm -hmm. And that's this. Is, so the people who rule us know this as well. And it's not only visual. That's why I rolled this for you as well, Layton, yeah. is because I wanted you to understand the four o'clock mm -hmm. that, that he didn't, he didn't explain. Max Major did not explain how he got Howie Mandel to pick the four o'clock. Well, during his talk, he said the word perform. He said the word performance. He said before. He said comfortable. And he actually said the word for even be, just as he's coming up to hack Howie yeah. in that way. He said, Howie, yeah. I'd like to connect with you. Are you up for it? Yeah. So yeah. those are five phonetic fours with four of them being hidden in other words. Mm -hmm. So it's incredible. <laughs> it, it, it strikes me two things, Jason. One is, wow, the incredible majesty of God's creation that he could create a brain I could process all this information that quickly in, a, mm -hmm. in an instinctive way. That is that that, that just is incredible. Uh, but secondly, it also displays how completely helpless we are to this type of stimuli. Like we really, there's no way we can train our minds to resist this, is there? No, <laughs> unfortunately not. They've tried to hack it in many different ways or protect it from hacking from outside sources. You can, because again, it's God's creation. It works really well in God's realm. Right. Because when you're, when we were evolving, let's say the right hand path to the cornfield was dangerous and the left hand path was safe. Mm -hmm. We would repetitively see our mom and dad and other tribe members take the left hand path. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Because maybe the right hand path to the cornfield is just crocodiles or wasps or bees or lions or something. Mm -hmm. So when we're interacting with God's realm, 
the repetitive content, you know, really goes far to in a way that'll do its job. It'll accomplish its task of trying to keep us alive another day. Right. The people who rule us found this out, and they found it out a long time ago, where they used to have stage plays and say the hero would wear a red cape. This is like thousands of years ago. This technology is thousands of years old. Yeah. Uh, it's not new. And so say the hero would wear a red cape. There would be a play, maybe a harvest play in the Agora, which is the center part of town, and they have the raised stage. That has its own hypnotic effect. And the hero would wear a red cape. And then the next day, the, you know, the merchants would say, oh, we're all sold out of red capes. <laughs> we're all sold out of the jewelry. Or, you know, right. whatever was going on up on the stage on a repetitive basis, people would act out. So humans act out like they mirror and mimic and emulate and copy the most repetitive content of their environment. I'll just I'll, I'll give you one example too. In 2001, there was a movie called Gone in 60 Seconds with Angelina right. Jolie. Yeah, I saw Nicolas, it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nicolas Cage. And this mm -hmm. was a, a movie about car theft. <laughs> Nicholas Cage was lots Wakanda. of great cars in that film. I recall there was a lot of great cars, a lot of great excitement, which has its own hypnotic effect as well, mm -hmm. but very repetitive again, but right. only in one direction about car theft. Mm -hmm. And this part of the brain, if you're in the cinema, the it's shown that you, the, this part of the brain doesn't know the difference between real life, screen time and imagined thoughts. So as you're sitting there and it's taking in the repetitive content of the car right. thefts that are going on. I mean, they had to steal a hundred cars to get Nicholas Cage's brother out of the grips of the local thug that was going to kill him unless right. he was executed. So this part of the brain is being proven. It doesn't know the difference. It doesn't know that it's fake. And everybody knows if you go watch Freddy Krueger, a scary movie, you all jump or, you, you know, your, yeah. your palms are sweaty or your heart's beating fast. That's proof positive. It doesn't know the difference. Yeah. And so to be safe in a car theft tribe, obviously, and if you interview, obviously you should be stealing cars. But if you interviewed anybody before this movie began and asked them, do you believe a movie about car theft? can program people to steal cars after the movie is done, everybody would say, no, this is perfect, right? Makes them the perfect victim for propaganda, mind control, brainwashing, and media, you know, psychological manipulation. They'd say, no way, that's not even possible. When that movie came out in Burnaby, BC, Canada, car theft went up 70% uh, in the first six or seven days. And then dispatchers were, were sort of connecting the dots of other local municipalities and boroughs. And they were, are you getting the same? Are you getting a bunch of car th thefts down there? They're like, yeah, everybody's stealing cars. What's going on? Do you have that movie being played in your town? They're like, mm -hmm. yeah, but that, who cares about that? That's not a factor. That is the factor. That was the factor. Dr. Jerry Croth, K, uh, K R O T H from Santa Clara University in uh, California tabulates these things all the time. There's all kinds of social, uh, you know, so, uh, sociological situations like this where the move, what we see on the screen will be acted out by the people and the people who rule us. And this is what went on in, you know, in the, the COVID issue and, but a long time before as well. And you'd be surprised how much of an effect this has on the public, how much the movies and TV shows are designed to have a particular effect. The commercials, even the news, even the news shows have yeah. these symbols and auditory cues inside of them. The scripts are given to the news shows and the average person, if you were to analyze all the content that they're putting out there that I study, all of it's disempowering. None of it will lift you up. Mm. None of it will make you more moral. You won't be more ethical. You won't be more family oriented. You'll be sort of hedonistic, 
addicted, sort of anti-family, anti-God, anti-nature, anti-life, anti-child, and sort of anti-happiness, anti-connection, anti-love. Those are the themes that we're getting repetitively uh, drowned in. I want to talk to you about and find out why that is. But before we go there, I have to ask you something that's somewhat personal. And this is a bit yeah. of a reveal to my audience. I am known in my family circle as a as a first class chicken when it comes to movies. I mean, I got scared watching Ghostbusters. Okay, you should yeah. uh, and and actually, Jason, I'm I'm the sort of person I can't watch a slasher film or something about a werewolf or, or or Dracula or anything because it it's so real to me that that later on I will have nightmares about it. Mm -hmm. Whereas you know I have an older brother and he could sit through anything. I mean he's just placid and he this he's entertained by it. And actually my response to uh horror movies and things like that is so powerful that I become irritated by the sense of being uh, of someone frightening me and, and I actually get my response to this to this fear mongering is almost like anger. Like I almost get up so upset that I just will get up and want to walk out of the theater. Does that reveal something about me? Am I more vulnerable, more susceptible to this type of messaging than someone like my brother who could sit through Freddy Krueger, you know, slashing up 80 people? This is probably a question a lot of people wonder about. Oh, I mean, you're both. You're doing yourself a good, you're doing yourself a favor, Leighton, by <laughs> having that reaction because we're all vulnerable to it. Just because someone sits through these movies, it it also... Sometimes the these tactics are old and they're ancient. And right. one one of the ancient tactics that they used to use, there's like books of magic in this. There's one called cremation of care. And you could look that up, cremation mm -hmm. of care ritual. Right. So what happens is when your brother does watch the, the shows and basically gets frightened but doesn't react, there has been proven a neurological sort of incineration of the care characteristic. Uh. So he loses the ability to care about what's going on. Mm. And also when you're scared and you sit and do nothing and it's over and over and over again in mind control, that's called the activation. So you're activating the fight or flight system in the... Right participant, but they're inhibiting it by sitting. So if you do that to a human many times, and the average 16-year-old sees 18,000 murders on the screen by the time they're 16, oh they have done the cremation of care. And cremation of care, if you were to talk to the average person and who doesn't know too much about psychology, they'll think they don't care about others. When right. you have your care cremated and you, you've you learned to sit through danger, you're sort of the, basically at a radio station, the, sing, the signal is the strongest at the tower. If in a cremation of care ritual, you lose care for yourself first and oh, others really? second. Yeah. So yeah. people that sit through these movies usually don't care as much about themselves as sort of a primary way to navigate life. They, uh -huh. they drink excess coffee, wine, they might vape, they cigarette smoke, so they have some takeout on a Friday night. They, they just, they sort of what they call go with the flow. Sometimes they're well-liked people, but their care is missing. And when your care is missing, you're sort of a non-threat to the other tribe members. So you're mm. well accepted, but you're not a leader. Interesting. And, and these are the psychological runoffs that come from watching a screen. Interesting. And, yeah. So my reaction would be would, would would display some something different then that that maybe I'm more sensitive to this type of stuff, have more self care, mm -hmm. and uh, have maybe uh, an instinctive awareness of what's being done to me, and that's why I'm irritated. So that's all. Like you say, that almost would be a good thing it, because. It's almost a self-preservation mechanism uh, that's maybe telling me get away from this because this is really bad for you. And you know, it's work because I will not. And people get mad at me. I will not watch any type of horror film or or anything like that because honestly, I can't withstand it and I don't find it entertaining. Uh, 
you know, and I struggle to understand, I actually struggle to understand why people want to watch that type of quote unquote entertainment. Uh, Jason, um, I want to, I want to pick your brain about something else. You might know this or you may not, but I was involved in uh, a very important case in Alberta called Ingram. And uh, this is where all of the lockdowns and lockdown measures uh, during COVID were, were challenged. And ultimately we were successful in getting a court decision such that all of those orders were declared illegal. During the course of uh, the experience in Alberta, and I'm sure this was true in other parts of Canada and the world, um, our chief medical officer of health, her name was Dr. Dina Hinshaw, she would have daily press conferences uh, in which she would come out and there would be this type of repetitive messaging. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was preparing to cross-examine her during the case, I did for about four days. I went through the transcripts of about 400 of these and I found there were all these cues. One of them was in every single one, she would, she would utter the words, the new normal. Oh, we, we have to get, we, we have to get accustomed to the new normal. And then part of the disclosure in the case, there was actually a, a scientific study that the Alberta government had commissioned with, with our tax dollars called COVID-19 Scientific Advisory Group rapid evidence report and it had two purposes it, it asked what factors impact attitudes toward or adherence to COVID-19 public health guidelines including hard hygiene wearing of face coverings and physical distancing and secondly what interventions can create more positive attitudes toward following public health guidelines with the goal of increasing a guideline adherence and I remember just being horrified that this type of study was being done on Albertans and, and some of the details in it, it actually identifies what kind of people will be more compliant. Uh, and of course, uh, it, it, it revealed a lot about, about me. I sort of reacted to this stuff in the same way that I react to horror movies. But until I met you and started to learn more about this, I didn't really understand what this meant. So with that sort of setup, can you explain, come back to this idea of why are the people who rule us doing this? Like, what, what's the goal? Well, uh... <laughs> well, we're just trying to keep it, we'll keep it in the path so that the average person can understand. But basically, all humans want to be safe. Right. And I mean, that's why we, I mean, that's why Howie Mandel said what he said with the watch and, and drew the happy face, because there's something inside of us that, you know, is looking for safety in the bigger herd. And he feels people, really safe because of his wealth and position. And so that makes him more susceptible to it. Is that true? Yeah. He, well, he doesn't think he can be hacked. Right. Right. So he's yeah. just totally open to, he's not looking for, he's like, there's no way I'm going right. to pick the, 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 cl the time on the clock mm -hmm. that you, the watch that you turn back. But yeah. someone like, uh, Dr. Henshaw, is that's her name, right? Dr. Yes. Henshaw. She's getting, she knows nothing about what I just showed you. Yeah. She's being given a script and she's yeah. sort of being told, you'll have to do this for your money. Yes. And if someone like uh, Dr. Henshaw, unfortunately, is the people who are doing this is all also organized these, what's called the Prussian school system. Mm. So Dr. Henshaw is sort of they've sort of what they call in psychology or mind control primed her properly she's coming in as a graduate from the system mm -hmm. and sh that system makes people extremely dependent she has right. no way to support herself outside the system and in a real free market economy no one's going to go to the service of dr henshaw because she can't make people healthy she'll probably right might be good at emergency medicine potentially where you know if i've lost an arm and you've lost a leg this is where medicine excels but in a free market economy where we get to pick freely where we're going to spend our money not much of the medical system is going to get our eye well so, you're, you're you're absolutely right jason she was basically just a public health bureaucrat who never really had any medical experience as a medical doctor so you're bang on there yeah, even as if, even if she had like even you know I'm just Dr. Fauci maybe a lab research yeah, but yeah, but the, yeah. but but what what I'm trying to say is anybody that followed the orders they're just trying to be safe because they don't 
They can't support themselves. Right. So that she's given a script and she knows she has to read it. She doesn't know that the repetitive content of her script is a documented propaganda, mind control, and brainwashing tactic. She also probably doesn't know that the colors red, or red and blue are also proven colors that enhance the ability of the subconscious mind to comply to the repetitive content. If you go back and watch, you'll probably see a lot of your public officials wearing, if they were men, blue suits with blue ties, blue suits with red ties, and even, you know, female counterparts like Dr. Henshaw, various shades of red or blue. She would be standing at the podium. That's another mind control technique. People right. who are standing, the people who are watching this are usually sitting down. That's a height differential. That's a power differential. When someone has a power differential, you're more right. apt to comply. Right. So there's all, she doesn't know why there's a podium. She doesn't know why the colors of the flag have uh, red and blue in it. And I know maybe yellow in your case, potentially. Yeah. Um, yeah. but, and she might not even know why she's, she's told you, you should wear some red and blue or shades of red and blue. And she doesn't know why she's repeating these phrases, the new normal six feet apart, safe right. and effective. Like, don't right. forget the whole human neurology down to every cell is obsessed with safety. This is why it's counting repetitive content. Right. This yeah. is why it heals a cut. So in sort of classic stage hypnosis sometimes they'll program people with trigger words the trigger word is supposed to activate a mind control program and get them running in a real funny direction for humans the trigger word once they're under this sort of hypnosis the trigger word is always safe and effective really that's why they they well this is why they call the you know safe supply with the drugs uh -huh. safe safe injection house safe and effective mm -hmm. That they want these policies in school to make the kids safe, safe learning environment. So you're just triggering the base neurology of all human genetic function is to keep safe. And this can be a key that goes in and unlocks someone's behavior to do things that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. What most people did during COVID and did willingly makes no logical or rational sense in regards to acquiring more safety. Like shutting right. your shutting your businesses down is not safe for the economy. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. uh, you know, apply, you know, complying with a, it was an authorized, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't approved. It was authorized, which means it skipped animal studies. And there was a truncated, uh, uh, human studies to comply with that. It's not, doesn't enhance your safety, but if you use these mind control techniques, what would these call these trigger words or these trigger phrases, safe and effective, you can literally get humans moving around the chessboard to do absolutely, uh, outrageous things and not just in 2020 throughout history as well so it's about it's about control um and you know jason you talked a little bit there about how people um basically complied and shut down their businesses when i was researching you and uh, i watched some episodes of your podcast one of them is episode number 175 the day the covid liars shut my business down Yes. And I watched this episode. This is was really interesting. Would you mind talking about that a little bit and sharing your experience? Well, basically, again, the foundation of all this, and just for me to go back to Mrs. Henshaw to finish yeah, off, yeah. She, you know, she just wants to be safe, and the people above her just want to be safe, but they believe they can acquire safety by controlling people. So oh, they're like, okay. why, why can't you just pay me 60% of your tax so that I don't have to work? Why can't you pay 70% of the tax? Why do you have to look into that corrupt business deal I did? Why do you have to look, mm -hmm. always look at what I'm doing? So that makes them sort of not safe. This and is so, like the, this is like the defense that was offered at Nuremberg yeah. where they would say, well, why did you do all these evil things? Well, I was following orders. So they would they, follow the orders because that would be the safest uh, that was safe, safest mode of action for them. Is that right? Absolutely. And so there's people at the top. We all know the regular characters, you know, the WEF and the yeah. UN and yeah. things like this. But they're full of characters that are in such, um, they have like a psychopathic pursuit of control to the point where 
if if you won't do what they say, they actually want to get rid of you. Mm -hmm. That's where they're they're. I mean, the only way the thing about life is that you can't control it, right? At at all, life has these magical flows, ebbs and flows. But well, we, you've shown us we can't even control our brains, right? <laughs> so you can't control other human beings. So basically, it's like in a mob movie where everything goes really bad. Right. They can't control like someone good in the mob. So the the guy, you know, the, the head guy says that the Don says, kill him. And then that right. offends a couple other people. He says, well, kill those three people, then kill those seven people, then kill those 10 people. And then all of a sudden you burn the whole structure mm -hmm. down. And this mm -hmm. is what they're doing. They're they're trying to control us but we're uncontrollable and yeah. they want to eliminate anything that they can't control but you can't control life so this is how atrocities start because there's people obsessed with control at the top and inside that equation is an uncontrollable life force and this group at the top says well anybody that can't be controlled we're just going to remove and euthanize and so the whole they start burn and then once they get they get rid of us they'll probably start with the people that obeyed them then they'll start with each other like if you right. left this group on an island with a bag of hammers you come back in a week there wouldn't be anybody left because <laughs> they they can't they can't help themselves right they just think that they have to control everything in order for them to satisfy this deep need for safety yeah. but we live on a planet where generally, no, it's not safe. Like the bus could hit me or sure. there's tsunami or there's an earthquake mm -hmm. or there's uh, so in this group thinks, well, if I could just make everything like a machine with an algorithm, mm -hmm. I can take all that out and I can finally be at peace like a five year old in the crib yeah. and and they can't. And that's what makes them so dangerous they, is they, that they create chaos by trying to impose an overabundance of order. Yeah. Overabundance of yeah. order in an uncontrollable uh, realm called Earth. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, so I guess your talk was about your question was about when they shut down my yeah. Gym. How did yeah? This was this is really an interesting story. I, I wanted, if you don't mind, I'd love to share it with our viewers. Yeah, well, before I was an uh, international speaker on the topics of mind control and brainwashing, I used to own a small chain of fitness clubs in Canada. Yes, I read about that. Yeah. Yeah. So I did that for 28 years and probably could have legged it out for 40 years if I wasn't interfered with. But basically, yes, the what they call the mass, uh, the mass formation, the, the mass psychosis delusion got a hold of all the authorities in, in my community. So again, Dr. Henshaw and say the police officer that came to my building, my place of business to shut me down, they already, they already knew I wasn't going to shut down because they know I'm like that. Right. So of course the first, the first one to get a call from the local police is yeah, Christoph's not closing. So this girl comes up and she knows it's wrong. Mm. Right. Yeah. The, the the or I think no, there's a girl that served. I got arrested as well, not arrested, but charged right. for speaking speaking at a public event during COVID. But it was a male officer that came. But he, they're coming from the same position. They're completely dependent. The yeah. school system has castrated them and made them impotent to take care of themselves in situations of immorality and unethical conduct. Right. So this and that weakens them even more that which makes them when you conduct immorality and unethical conduct, there's been proven in psychology that it weakens your overall energy state. Right. So it makes you more prone to comply to the next tyrannical command. So right. the, the man comes up and I'm looking him right in the eye like I usually do. And he's slouched over. He knows what he's doing is wrong. He knows this is fraudulent. He knows this is fabricated. And he's like, Jay, we got to shut you or we're going to have to find you. Right. Okay. And so I closed my doors. And of course, I, you know, with that fitness club, I probably bring in 25000 or $20,000 a month for me and my family. And uh, the government gave me 2000 2000 for me and 2000 for my wife at the time. 
Wow. So four thousand, so sixteen thousand dollar loss, and then at the end of the tax season, the government said you made too much money, so you have to give back the two thousand, uh, all, the, all the money we gave you. Un this is, I mean, the criminality here, but this is what this group is like. Right. They want to make sure you don't have a way to control yourself, so that you're easier to control. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to shut my business. And when my business shut, the next door business, which was a big grocery store chain, it's open, but I'm closed. So, of course, uh -huh. I said, well, where's the virus? I mean, how does it know who's shopping for food as compared to who's running on the treadmill or, you know, exercising, doing some squats? But this sort of once you get the collective to buy into something that's completely fantastical. It doesn't matter as long as they find safety, as long as they get their paycheck. Right. So it's a very dangerous system that we have because there's so many people feeling uneasy and unsafe and anxious and frustrated out there. But the only way they can maintain or, you know, reestablish safety is to comply to immoral unethical, unjust orders from literally a very ancient crime syndicate. If you want to know how old the crime syndicate is that's controlling all our government officials across the world, there's a, there's a great documentary called Cult of the Medics. It was mm -hmm. by a Canadian filmmaker. And you can go see the average person not only does not know that their TV was manufactured as a documented military weapon. They, they don't know that um, these people that th the misleaders on the TV aren't working in their best interest. Wow. Incredible. But of course you're ungovernable and you remade yourself and uh, thank God you did because now you're helping so many people and reaching, I'm sure many, many more in your current vocation, in your new vocation than you were when you were involved in, uh, in health and fitness. Now, you have said, and I think more than you've said, you've revealed that we are so vulnerable uh, to this type of messaging, this type of mind control, that we really, there's not much we can do to protect ourselves. But uh, I noticed in researching you, you also have developed some really uh, interesting uh, courses that people can take so they can learn more about this and perhaps that could help them let's say avoid uh situations where they can be exposed um but you want to explain about perhaps uh, a little bit of a silver lining on this dark cloud about what what work you're doing and how you're helping people to to perhaps um, mitigate the effects of this type of mind control yeah, absolutely. I do. When I look out, I mean, I can't have a good life unless everybody else has a good life. So if I walk down the road, someone's God having sort you. of a God crappy time, you. I'm like, ah, you know, I could probably have some information, make their life a little bit better. I'm not going to go preach to them on the street corner. But if anybody's ever interested, I've studied this group and their tactics, which are very simple, by the way, same as Max Major. These right. aren't complex uh, tactics. So there's only a couple ways that you can bypass them. And but, you know, it's easier said than done because the mind control, anything that's repetitive registers as normal. Normal registers as safe and predictable in the mind. Mm -hmm. So we're, we come up against the TV and the movie screen. Right. And this is where you're going to get most of the programs. This is why there's new movies all the time. They're going to do program upgrades give you the movie Contagion with Matt Damon and then World War Z with Brad Pitt. When we, when you and I were young, I'm 53. So when, yeah. you, when you and I were young, we would have Dustin Hoffman and outbreak, yeah. uh, you know, or 28 days when I was yeah. a bit younger. Yeah. So they're always going to give you the repetitive content where in the, in the direction that they want you to go. They want to control your beliefs and your reactions. I mean, the movie Contagion with Matt Damon, which of course was very heavily played on Netflix, just happened to be in March 2020, released again. <laughs> to give everybody their script about what to do. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. Yeah. I can't believe they do this stuff. What are the chances? So, 
you have to understand is that, okay, you're going to have some habits and those habits are going to be based on safety and safety is what the bigger group is doing or what you're used to. It's right. probably used to watching movies. You're used to watching TV shows. Yeah. You're going to have to work on, and I have, basically I use what's called wall art and I use a very particular form of hypnosis to reprogram this part of the brain that you can't speak to any other way. You, your uh -huh. willpower, and this is why you could go join a gym or you join uh, you know, Good Life Fitness or something like this in Canada and you probably yeah. joined five times, you probably quit six times. <laughs> and so it's because your determination, your willpower, your control and your haram for your strength, it means nothing to this part of the brain. If you uh -huh. live in an unhealthy tribe and you have more unhealthy repetitive content, if people in your family are overweight or addicted, your nervous system says, ah, oh, it's too dangerous to be healthy. I'll be in the uh -huh. minority. So you can join the gym all you want with the conscious mind. The subconscious will make sure you never get there. Incredible. And yeah. so you have to understand is you can either taking the repetitive content from what I call planet mental asylum, the TV and the <laughs> movie screen, or you can control your own repetitive content using the screens. I use my phone when I'm cleaning yeah. the condo here in Latvia yeah. and I will drown my subconscious pathway in positive messaging about abundance, positive messaging right. about wealth, positive messaging about, you know, lo loving relationship with, uh, my, my girlfriend, Christine, and keep right. on drowning the nervous system and repetitive content because it doesn't, this part of the brain doesn't have the ability to judge what that content is, but the most repetitive content wins and it will invisibly steer you toward the most repetitive content, mm -hmm. which of course in, in its understanding is the, the bigger herd. It right. wants you to be safe. It's a very loving caress. It, it loves you into the direction of the most re repetitive content. And but if your fam family's a bunch of alcoholics, you're go you're going to want to drink. It's going to want you to drink. So it uses that loving caress and pushes you right off the cliff. Right. <laughs> and it won't. You can put your heels in, and the gravel will be flying off your heels. But because you don't really want to go there, but this part of the brain is like an 800 pound gorilla where the most repetitive content is you're getting dragged in that direction, whether you want to or not. Mm. So you might as well control the content yourself. I don't watch the TV. I don't watch. If I watch a movie, you know, because I'm stuck in transit, I'm flying. My computer battery has died. I will watch a movie and I will keep pressing pause. I, I do something called the mind control movie review and I will analyze a whole movie for the mind control content. That's the only time I'll watch. Really yeah. fascinating. You know, this reminds me of um, what our mothers used to tell us, you know, we are, where, we are what we eat. And, and, uh, but what you're saying is it's more than that. Everything that we consume, that we see, that we hear, that we experience becomes part of us. Uh, it, it uh, in a way that uh, that we can't control, and so the only thing we can control is you know what is going into the system. What do we expose our eyes to, our ears to, our our sensual uh, world? Uh, how we can we can we have some control, not total control, but we have some control over what messaging we're receiving. Um, and so the the maybe the best way is to make sure, as you do, that. Um, we're being flooded with things that are positive, that are, that are affirming, um, that, that are not, uh, steeped in these, in this negative messaging. That seems to be the best antidote, or if there is an antidote, that's, that's the best defense. Is that fair to, is that a fair way to put it? Absolutely. There, so this group works with the repetitive content, but they're also aware that if, if they can poison a human, even on a minor level, that the human becomes injured and they know all injured am animals cling more to the herd. Right. So they do have a one, two punch that people should be aware of. They're not only controlling the repetitive content of your, your radio, your newspaper, your billboards, your TV shows, the commercials, the news, the newscasts, 
they're not only controlling the repetitive content, they're making sure to intertwine repetitive content so you're attracted to coffee, alcohol, marijuana, junk food, takeout, right. and any other sort of feel good, you know, feel good psychoactive substance mm -hmm. because it's being shown that the 30% of the population will mimic, copy, and emulate the repetitive content of the media no matter what. Mm. But if you poison them, you can double that. That's right. why poisoning is, you'll see, is one of their primary goals. It doesn't matter if it's your Teflon mm. pet that was made by DuPont. Go watch the documentary, The Devil We Know. Teflon and all nonstick poison uh, pens are extremely toxic. They knew that. That's why they released it. Mm. your aspirin, your Tylenol, the pesticides on your food, the fluoride in your toothpaste. These are all there to enhance the effect of the repetitive content they riddle throughout the media. Would this also explain the mRNA vaccines then? Mm -hmm. okay. Absolutely. Because they wanted to start a cascade. They have a whole bunch of things they want to accomplish. And they want they wanted to start with, you know, sort of a big trauma, lots of poisoning, and then hopefully get it to, you know, domino all the way down. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jason, this has just been a, a really, again, a mind blowing conversation. I'm sure we're going to have many, many, many questions from people. And uh, I'm, I'm expect they're going to want to have you back. And I hope you're, you're willing to do that. Um, I couldn't find. Uh, I, I appreciate your podcast. I couldn't find that you've yet written a book. I hope that's on your list of things to do. You're obviously very busy, but wow, uh, I think there's a best-selling book in here somewhere. You've probably been told that already. And speaking yeah. of books, uh, we're, we close off our show with something called The Reading List. You've already mentioned uh, two or three uh, really, really uh, compelling titles. Um, I've got a couple I'm going to share here. And then I'm going to ask you to finish off with maybe a couple of suggestions for people who want to learn more about the topic that you've been discussing today, maybe expand their understanding of this sort of thing. Uh, the first one that I found is probably a book that you've read uh, that, uh, that I read recently in preparation for our conversation. It's called The Rape of the Mind, The Psychology of Thought Control, uh, Menticide and Brainwashing. This is a and uh, an older book uh, it was published around the middle of the 20th century. Uh, the one that I that that uh, I got was a 2015 reprint of a 1961 edition. This book is um, really uh, <laughs> again, uh, it's <laughs> it went beneath the whole number of things that I suspected were true, and I didn't really understand when I read this. It was like, oh, okay, this is why this is the way it is. So in 1933, the author, this uh, his name is Dusta Mirlu. Mirlu. Hope I'm saying that correctly. Dusta Mirlu. Yes, thank you. Uh, to study the methods by which systematic mental pressure brings people to abject submission, and by which totalitarians imprint their subjective truth on their victims' minds. And uh, this is all sorts of military implications, mental torture, uh, things of this nature. It's a difficult book to read because uh, you know it it it, uh, it talks a lot about really human suffering and the intentional infliction of really severe human suffering, um, and uh, and also it's hard to read because uh, it makes one realize that these techniques have been used on you, on me, uh, on everyone all of our lives almost without our awareness, and I think that's become very vivid during our conversation today. The other book. Um, is one that I'll mention. Uh, it's someone who is an admirer of yours, Stéphane Saint Pierre, uh, had as, as a book "Covid Me and the Technocracy," and uh, th this book uh, is also very interesting. As his description is, this book represents for me as a continuation of my appreciation of some of the wisest who have lived amongst us, and my continuing exploration of this reality that is not what it seems, or limited to what is perceived from our regular senses. The Matrix is pushing back now as people were awakening in 2019 with the populist, he says, I think Yellow Vest movement and the Free Hong Kong movement, and we must realize that we are so much, we are so much more. And he says, I hope this book can allow you to start realizing this for yourselves. 
Uh, again, it's called COVID Me and the Technocracy. So those are the two titles that I've added to our reading list for today. So I'll throw it over to you, Jason, and uh, I'm sure you have a whole bunch. Uh, you probably have a hard time limiting all the interesting books you've read on this topic, but if you can share with us a cut, you know, a couple or a few that uh, you think would be uh, helpful to people and their understanding of this topic, we'd really appreciate it. Well, I think we'll go with the mainstream. Uh, we'll go with the mainstream recommendation first. That in order to avoid this sort of mind control the best you can, you have to have the physical strength. The physical strength will lead to the moral strength, which will lead to the ethical strength, the spiritual strength. The physical strength is a big pillar that people have to take care of first. So the best book for health is called How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy by Paul Check. And Check is C-H-E-K. So that's the mainstream uh, recommendation. For people who want to know how far this group has gone to investigate what it takes to put someone under mind control and brainwash them, I would suggest Kathy O'Brien's book. It's with Kathy with a C, mm -hmm. Transformation of America. And I'll even send you, I'm going to send you the Max Major video. I'm Great. going, and I will send you the documentary. If someone maybe wants to watch Kathy talk about yeah. her experiences. I'll, we'll, post, we'll post those links for sure. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, just know it comes with a little bit of a warning in, in regards to, this will show you what there's people that told Dina Henshaw to do what she did. And th yeah. th it wasn't really top level mind control, very basic. Yeah. The documentary will show you what, who the group is, who's involved and what they've done to the public over time to research these modalities. Mm -hmm. So there's a bit of a warning there because it'll, Kathy O'Brien was a first-hand witness. She was in the program. And uh, if you're not understanding what's going on, this will give you a very big glimpse behind the green curtain at Oz. Oh, fantastic. And so, Jason, if people want to find out more about you and, and uh, your podcast and the courses that you offer, uh, they can also visit your website, right? Uh, we can provide a link to that. Uh, and... Um, your podcast now, you've been doing this for a while. You're over 200 episodes, aren't you? Yeah, I've, I haven't done one in about six or eight weeks. People tell me to go back. I'm writing articles more. Again, yeah. people can get those at jchristoff.com. If someone wanted to email me, uh, they could email me at info at jchristoff.com. And if they do, I'll put them on my private email list, but I'll also send them, maybe they could request, I'll send them a, doc, uh, a made-for-TV special called The Push, where a United a UK mind control expert by the name of Darren Brown, he was the guy that hacked Simon Pegg, by yes, the way. Yes, yes, he's brilliant. He, wow. he did a uh, special on TV where he mind controlled three out of four people to commit murder live on video. Oh my goodness! So if so, but the thing is, it's not as fantastical as I described. The man who was murdered was indeed uh, pushed off a 15-story building by the participant who thought they were killing him, but that old man who was pushed off the building was a stunt man, and he was harnessed. And once okay. the push had been uh, done, the psychologists came out and said, look, you didn't kill the